Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. How is it that the Catholic bishops are being used by Obama to advance his radical anti-Christian agenda? A little review is in order. When the mass immigration of the Irish and Italians was in full swing over 100 years ago, Catholics in urban centers began joining the Democratic Party in droves. Not surprising, considering there was a natural affinity between what the church taught about workers' rights and social justice and what the Democratic Party preached about workers' rights and social justice. The social justice initiatives in the church were in their infancy. The labor movement took on the role of advancing social justice causes and large numbers of laborers were Catholic. And the labor movement, by and large, became an extension of the Democratic Party. So this link was established between the Democrats and Catholics, and the link was the labor movement. This was the status quo for nearly 100 years, but in 1973, Roe versus Wade changed everything. The Democratic leadership supported Roe, and many Catholics in the pews did not. So a rift began developing between Democrats and Catholics. Not a huge one, but enough of one to loosen the Democratic stranglehold on lay Catholics. So the Catholic vote, long a given among Democrats, was suddenly up for grabs, and today you don't win the White House without capturing the majority of Catholic voters. So Obama set about on a course to peel away enough Catholic votes to tip the scales in his favor. His weapon of choice? Confusion. Appeal to the traditional Catholic base talking about justice and labor and health while staying largely mum on abortion or appealing to a common ground strategy. And Obama had a secret weapon in his war. Inside the Catholic Bishops Conference, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, the USCCB, he had agents that were and still are liberal Democrats disguised as faithful Catholics. These people advise the bishops, are friends with them, they have their ear, and they run the show at the USCCB. These people are constantly pushing the Democratic Party line of the common ground and social justice. You know, and the bishops like that kind of talk. While they directly oppose abortion in no uncertain terms, the other Democratic issues still ring sweet to not a few bishops. This Democratic plan of infiltrating and dividing the bishops has worked brilliantly. It has paralyzed them and split them. Many bishops still like hearing the talk about social justice, but coming from the Democrats, that talk is honeyed poison. This has opened up a fissure within the Catholic Bishops' Conference. A minority are very leery of the Democrats for their pro-abortion views, but a majority, however, are constantly worming around trying to find common ground and engage in never-ending dialogue with the killers on those other issues like health care and minimum wage and nuclear war, etc. They are simply too closely allied with the Democrats to want to really upset them. The bishops are afraid. This is why most bishops sat on their hands while Obama went to Notre Dame. This is why they were quiet in the face of the continuing decades-old Notre Dame scandal of which Obama was just the latest sad chapter. This is why they continue to ignore canon law and give Holy Communion to pro-abort Catholics. This is why they have a decades-long scandal at the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. This is why they end up paying hundreds of millions of dollars to the same groups that liberal left-wing Democrats fund and operate. This is why they have allowed active homosexuals to run wild in the church for the past 40 years, including the priesthood. This is why Catholic universities continue to have pro-abortion Democratic Catholics give talks with no ramifications. This is why they sit by largely quiet when liberal Democratic Catholics in name only form political groups supporting Obama and his pro-abortion, pro-homosexual agenda. This is why open lesbians have positions of influence at the national headquarters of the bishops. This is why Democratic Union bosses sit as advisors to the bishops. This is why pro-homosexual anti-Catholic movies continue to get a big thumbs up and high praise from the movie critic employed by the bishops' conference. This is why the bishops produce a voting guide called Faithful Citizenship that in the end gave no clear practical moral guidance to Catholics about the life issues and how to vote. This is why a huge number of employees at the Bishop's Washington, D.C. headquarters have Obama bumper stickers on their cars. How about a little separation of church and state now, huh? 
The staff of the Bishops' Conference has too many close ties with the Democratic Party leadership. In fact, some of the staff practically is the party leadership. Fifty years ago, the bishops and Democrats may have been reading off the same page. Today, that's not the case. The Democratic Party is not what it once was. That's why Ronald Reagan switched. That's why Governor Zell Miller switched. The Democratic Party simply cannot claim that it is promoting the Christian understanding of social justice in any way. The Democratic leadership are killers, plain and simple. History will record them as such, and most certainly the Lord of history will. The Democratic Party leadership and the billionaire financiers behind it don't care about workers or blacks or Hispanics or the uninsured or anyone else. They use those groups as voting blocks to seize power, and then they use that power to drive an agenda of decidedly anti-Christian themes. Abortion, homosexuality, sex without consequences, the obliteration of the traditional family, an ever-increasing tax burden on families, and so forth. Not for nothing has Catholic Archbishop Raymond Burke called the Democrats the party of death. The bishops need to wake up and realize that you cannot traffic with killers and sexual perverts and still think some good is going to come from it. Obama and his cronies are using the long-standing ties with the bishops to sneak in a fifth column and neutralize the church as a force for moral good. That fifth column is the labor movement, most especially the SEIU. The labor movement is nothing but a smokescreen for liberal left-wing activism. Many of the bishops either don't see this or are complicit in it. Intentionally or not, too many of them are helping advance an agenda of evil by their silence. It's time for them to call out the evil and cut the ties. When you sleep with dogs, you're going to get fleas. I'm Michael Voris. Please help us keep delivering these kinds of messages that so desperately need to be heard and acted on. Join RealCatholicTV.com today as a premium subscriber. Become immersed in the faith established by Jesus Christ. The Catholic Church is the only hope against evil because that is its God-given mission. As our Lord said, apart from me, you can do nothing. Join RealCatholicTV.com today as a premium subscriber and come to learn and love Christ more deeply.